plants, the green frontier. These are the discussions of the podcast Horticult. It's continuing mission to talk about strange new cultivars, to seek out new flowers and plant them, to boldly garden like no one has before. What's up, everybody? This is Blaine from the Horticult. How y'all doing? On this episode of the podcast, me and Brad sit down and go deep into drip irrigation installation. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Hope you enjoy it. Let's get it on. And this is B Flane. And this is B Rad. And we are the Horticult. Thanks for coming along for the ride. On this episode of the podcast, me and Brad are going to have a sit down and have a serious conversation about drip. Drip, drip, drip. drip. line irrigation installation. <laughs> Yeah, super importante. Super importante. As far as like where we're from and like how uh, rare our resource of water is, we want to make every drop count. And of course for ourselves, but we're talking kind of landscape, plants, ground covers, trees. We want to provide them with the best uh, resource of or source of, of uh, water. So a lot of the times... We're overwatering our shrub beds. This is a way to reduce that without interfering with your lawn system. By get, you should not be watering the same as two different areas. The same frequency on your turf grass right. versus your turf grass needs requires a lot more water per year, okay. around forty inches per year to keep alive and green and lovely. Good night. And our average rainfall in Utah is like 13, 14 uh, Let's inches. say 15. Okay, we'll 15. We'll give, give ourselves Round a or up. Down. Yeah. Uh, so that is our average rainfall, which we're above average this year Yeah. for this time. But if we don't get any more rain the rest of the year, then we're going to be on average. Well, and if, but if you think about the future and climate change... Dude, we're 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 shooting for that forty inches a year. We'll get that. We'll get there eventually, <laughs> but just not right now. Right, right. <laughs> uh, one of the ways that we can reduce and save is through a drip line. Just real quick. Oh, I, as you know, I always you go, have you to. Go, you go. No, no, no. I've got I've got one question. So as far as like the advantage to to drip versus the overhead sprinkler system is efficiency. Efficiency through through not letting like. Reducing evaporation, is that right? Yes. Okay, evaporation totally. from the plant, evaporation from... Well, you're trying to get the water to the roots, right? So if you're using an overhead sprayer, it's going in the air, the wind can move it, you could have drift, you can have evaporation, right? So it gets on the surface and needs to be able to leach into it. So if you also ha- are on a slant, it's just running off. So you're having to water even more to get that leaching into the, down to the root system. Uh, but it is almost like it's, I think it's around 90% efficient compared to getting water to the roots than overhead spray. Wow. 90% somewhere in that Brilliant. range. That's the number that I've heard anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a great, huge savings as far as like quantity being used. So, and you could in fact water your lawn through a drip. I would love to see that. You could do it that uh design right well know? that's what um one of our our friends uh, brandon he actually installed a uh, netafim which is a brand and it what what's special about netafim tubing is that it has an emitter which we're going to talk about what an emitter is inside the tube so you do not have to install an emitter in Netafim, the Netafim already has it, which now there's knockoff brands. So it's it's almost like Netafim is like... Is the name brand. It's like the, is the Nike name brand. of yep. the shoe world. Right. Yeah. And so there's knockoffs of Netafim that you can find cheaper or wherever. Um, but an, an emitter, basically an emitter is a one-way valve for water to flow out of at a certain rate. So you need you have so much pressure in the tube, which you have to ha- reduce the pressure. So that's part of the system. Uh, you have to have a pressure reducer somehow. It's, and that's a simple little adapter you piece. You can put right. on right before. Okay, good. Yep. And, and 
uh, they're actually, we were informed, I was informed, when we had Cynthia B on, when she was talking about it, that it's, they have new adapters that they will plug right into your sprinkler system. You could remove a sprinkler head, like the whole thing, and and screw it on in the place of where that sprinkler was. Instead of taking a whole zone, installing it, cutting the pipe, putting in the pressure reducer mm-hmm. at the head of the pipe and putting it through. Now they have ingenuity right there. Yeah, They've eliminated all those other processes. You don't need to glue. You don't need to do any of that stuff. You can just remove a sprinkler head at one end of one zone and put it in. And she, she recommended putting two in. One at the very front of the zone, one at the end of the zone, and looping it, which makes sense to me. But okay, yeah. And then and then capping off the in, the in between guys. Exactly. Got it. Yep. And then you just cap them, <clears throat> just pull them out. So and they the have manufacturers little caps. and the engineers have have sounds to me like they've made it very easy to retrofit uh, an, an old sprinkler system. And that was one thing that was holding me back from doing more. Mm-hmm. Is the difficulty of changing over your zone. So each zone has a valve. So after the valve opens, the opening of the valve, <laughs> hence the, <laughs> the valve opening. Okay. So it's going to your sprinklers on the way to the sprinklers. You have to put that pressure reducer, pressure reducer. On. Yeah. Don't put it before the zone of yeah, the main put, cause put that it, put it after you put that's making all your zones pressure reduced and you don't want that. Well, and if I, if, if I, if I'm getting my pressure, uh, numbers, right, I believe, uh, the pressure can be upwards of like 80 PSI before and then with a pressure reducer. So if you're looking for numbers like, Oh, how much should I reduce this for my dripping dripper system? You want to reduce it down to about 25 PSI. Yeah, I was thinking thirty. Yeah, but, twenty-five, thirty. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're basically taking it to just under half, uh, if not just a little bit more, so that you don't blow your uh, emitters, right? Which are the, what the little little pores that yeah. the regulators that allow the water to come out of each hole, and they don't let water back in. That's important because it's a one-way street. You can get uh, soil. You could get little pieces of particulates in there that Maybe will clog nematodes. emitters. Maybe nematodes. I don't know. <laughs> little microscopic, like uh, little. Yeah, I don't know if we need to worry about that. Algae. Yeah. I guess I don't know if we have native nematodes. I've never looked at that. Oh, I guarantee it. You think? Yeah, you're for sure, for sure. Well, predatory ne- nematodes. They're everywhere. I think you just get them, and I thought people just used them at golf courses here because they're so expensive. Have you used them in the greenhouse we before? We have, yeah. We've used uh, beneficial nematodes for fungus gnat larvae, Woo. which can wreak havoc on uh, uh, prop- when you're propagating poinsettias. Is that they what you're can- dealing with right that's now? That's what we're dealing with. And so it's <laughs> kind of like when you when you drench those little guys on there, they go and they are so super voracious and they go through and they uh, they only attack the... The bad larvae, so and the plant thrives and it's happy and it calluses and roots and next thing you know, it's Christmas time and you've got a poinsettia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we get off topic too far, yeah, yeah, drip systems, right? Emitters. Um, a, you were talking about yeah. Netafim, mm-hmm. and there's different brands. Um, some, a few different mm-hmm. types uh, of of drip systems. I remember back in the day using uh, what was called the soaker hose. And I don't know if that's just a general term, but it was like the rubber tubing about maybe half inch to three quarter inch that would weep. It had micro holes throughout the entire hose and it would weep uh, little droplets um, all throughout the entire hose. So if it was a 50 foot or a hundred foot drip hose, um, it wasn't that there was an emitter every six inches or eight inches. It was like the entirety of that. And the cool thing is, is that they would make these out of old, old tires, right? So we're reusing, repurposing, um, recycling, what not have you. Yeah. <laughs> Super cool. But soaker hoses, I haven't looked around for these uh, for a while. So I don't know if they're, yeah. I do remember them. Yeah. I don't know if they're still a thing. 
Yeah, it, it does. It, it it emits quite a bit more water. Do they sit on the surface or are they, they buried? Can. Yeah, they can. But uh, ultimately, the best way to do a drip system is, and you just recently put one in your your yard. Yeah. Uh, do you put it on I top of the? It. Yeah, put it I, on top. I buried it. In, uh, it's actually uh, underneath the mulch layer, so I didn't bury it in the soil. Okay. Um, uh, parts of it I did because my mulch was thin at areas. But, um, yeah, no, I just did it beneath the, the mulch layer. And just above the soil layer, right? And just above the soil. I don't so know if that's sandwiched. totally, I don't, well, I think you can do it any way you want. You could do it in the soil. There would you, be, it seems to me as there, there would be a bit more evaporation if you just simply left it on top. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of negating part of it, but I have seen it on top. Okay. I don't know if it's because the mulch is like washed away or uh, it could be blown that. away. Uh, but I've seen it. It's way easier to install this sucker before you mulch. <laughs> yeah. So if you can, if you're doing a fresh area, do the irrigation before you mulch. What about what about uh, before you plant? Is that smart? Yes. No? I planted so. Um, if you have a plan, it depends on the kind of system you're doing. Like if you have trees, you kind of have to go around, use different kind of emitters that put out more. I, I don't even know. That could take away from the overall, if you're using Netafim, that might not be what you want to do. Because Netafim has those emitters. You don't want to plug more emitters into it that are at a higher uh, per gallon per hour uh-huh. gallon per gallon per hour or because per it, minute, it lowers the whole system down where it's already low so you might need to do that on do trees on a different kind of system but i have seen you, you can calculate how much a, a tree needs uh per watering mm-hmm. and you can figure that out according to the how high it is you do the canopy that's how much evaporates out of it or how quickly the water evaporates out of it and so that's what needs to be replaced. So you're just replacing the water that has been taken Evap- from it. Tra- transpired. Yeah, transpired, evapotranspiration. Yeah. So that's something you have to figure out. And you use bigger emitters for more gallons per hour. Um, the So those emitters along the Netafim are rated all the same. So it's about four. I think it was mine that I put in was about four gallons an hour i don't know okay that's okay and i only i don't even run it for that's probably 20 correct. minutes or whatever. yeah four gallons per hour so so with netafim then you're adjusting the amount of time you run the system to get the water to then spread out and and uh hit your perennials and or yeah. trees you need to run it a little longer than you would other like um other overheads systems. and rotors okay. you probably run it about the same as a rotor mm-hmm so, for example, uh, and, and I had written down real quick, uh, what's the difference between uh, the duration you're running your clock, your, your irrigation system, on a perennial bed versus around a tree? Like, and, and I have a thought in my head. But yeah, you, go ahead. Well, uh, I was just thinking with perennial, perennial beds, just in general, as a general rule of thumb, uh, three times a week. This is the middle. This is the summer, right? Yeah. Three times a week for uh, 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then for a tree, I would go two times a week for an hour. And the reason why is your tree's roots are going to be much more likely to be deeper and wider. And um, so kind of a deep soak for trees and more of a lighter soak for your perennials. And, of course, annuals if that's how you roll. But yeah. Um, well, I've seen emitters for trees that are bubbling, that are more like a bubbler. Bubbler, yeah. So they they do a couple gallons, uh, quite a bit an hour more. Like, I don't know, like 10, 10 gallons an hour instead yeah. of four. So, but, but here, what's the advantage of putting out more volume faster versus the slow, the slow, you know, the, the if you put out less water... It just re- it just needs that amount of water. The tree needs more water per watering than you can do in an emitter like a, a netafim watering. Okay. 
and the roots are deeper, so you need that weight of the water to leach down. So if you're watering a tree, you should have it kind of uh, bermed, I guess, Mm -hmm. around the trunk area, so the water kind of will sit and leach. And settle down in that that ring, I guess. And it's still coming out slow. It's not like a a hose. Right, still, It's still just bubbling out, but it fills that little uh, reservoir that you've created around the trunk. And it'll leach down into the uh, the soil where the, where the tree has its roots. Cool. How close do you put? How close would you put a dripping system like the tubes in order to get water to touch in between? So um, the in Netafim, they're they're either like six or eight inches apart. Um, I I I plan on it being about a foot. So okay. six inches on either side of the of the tube okay. uh, at the emitter. So you don't want to put each tube further than a foot apart. If you want to have consistent water yep. um, so, from one side to another. Okay. Yep. So if if you think about it, it, it is it would be a foot from end to end. So a foot, twelve inches. So if you're thinking radius, six inches. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so the water there. spreads yeah. about six inches on either side of the tube. Yep. Efficiently. Efficiently. Okay, cool. Yeah. Very good. Very so you good. don't want to put them too far apart. If you look at your emitter or if you look at your tubing or net of him or whatever, how far each emitter is from each other on the tube is how far you should put the other tube away from oh. that tube. So if it's eight inches, then you can go put 16 it, inches. Yes. Oh. Well, you will go... Eight inches from, yes, exactly, 16, exactly. 16. Sixteen. The tubing would be sixteen. Exactly right. And that's to say, if you if you're planting, um, really tight, um, you know, it's maybe not a bad idea to experiment with that and like right. spread it out even just a touch. There, more. there's some netafim or that don't have an emitter, so it's the same mm-hmm. kind of tubing, so you can kind of take the water through an area of not watering it and delivering it to an area that you're watering. And you punch your own hole. Yep. You just, where it's cut off there, they have little, uh, little sectional connectors and you can just connect it right up. It's super easy. You just, you don't even need a tool. I mean, you need a tool to cut it uh-huh. <laughs> obviously, Yeah. but then you like, rah, 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 you just wiggle it in and it's super secure. Cool. And it's the same as like with funny pipe. Funny pipe is kind of, a heavier duty uh, type of tubing, uh, plastic, plastic, bendable. Hard black. Yeah, bendable. And usually, what happens? People use ne- uh, that as a an extender to put the sprinkler exactly where they want it. So maybe they cut the PVC pipe, and they'll put this little, um, I guess, adapter that plugs into the funny pipe, and then they can put the funny pipe right where they want it and then they connect the funny pipe right to the sprinkler mm-hmm. so you don't need to cut the pvc perfect you just got to have it in the like general area about two three feet and then they'll cut the funny pipe into that area and they call it funny pipe but it's bendable yeah. but what the drip line comes in usually is not that thick it's hole punchable it's a lot thinner membrane mm-hmm. i guess of a plastic yeah it doesn't tear though it's still pretty strong but yeah, they have tools, so you, that's a different kind of system. Mm-hmm. So you could have a totally uh, a pipe, or the the uh, see I don't know the drip line, and you can punch. They have hole punches that you could put little emitters on for each section, uh, and directly put it. So Netafim is a blanket watering of drip. Okay. So Gives every you six options. inches, yeah. So this other way, I. I I don't know if you, you, what you would call it, what the term would be. Yeah, it's just a different type of tubing with no holes already yep. pre So you have to punch the holes. Yeah, and, and actually that's what we use in the greenhouse um, for the large poinsettias uh, that we grow. We run tubing, we punch our own hole, run a little micro tubing from that, like a little tiny eighth of an inch or yeah, eighth of an inch uh, line with a little stake. And a regulator, they call it the regulator, but it's a little stake and, and like a little tiny dripping regulator that you then push down into the soil. And, um, yeah, I mean, for a, a pot crop 
in the greenhouse, we run those things about 20 minutes. Um, and until the water comes out the bottom of the pot and then voila, Mm -hmm. about every two to three days. So I was told to, well, like my front pots, I, I actually connected one of those Mm -hmm. little black tubes, the eighth of an inch tube from my Netafim to my pot. So I punched a hole in and put an emitter in and put the tube on oh, and connected cool. it to my pot, my my outside pots, so I don't have to hand water them. So anymore. you can you can customize. I wouldn't your... do it a lot. Right, right, right. Yeah, because and, and you if you make sure that that um, that emitter that you plug in to the Netafim is the same rate. As your Netafim is. Okay. So it's just like you had another emitter of that section. Like one gallon per hour or exactly. whatever it one is. one gallon per hour. Okay. Four, four gallon per hour. Sure. Cool. And then um, I would only run my Netafim per zone. It, so this is the blanket watering Netafim, not, not the uh, tubing that locates it to everywhere. Um, direct drip watering system that you customize. I wouldn't. I wouldn't run it longer than a hundred feet okay. per zone. So if you have multiple um, valves hooked to a Netafim, I wouldn't run that Netafim longer the, than a hundred feet. The distance less than a hundred feet, it, just because it redu it uh, the pressure yeah. is the pressure so far goes too low. And and right where I plugged in that emitter. Um, my Netafim is not a hundred feet. So I knew I would have enough PSI yeah. to run extra little emitters. I have two of them. Cool. So one is running to my, my, um, pots on my porch and another one is running to my, uh, bird bath. Oh, cool. So I keep, keep fresh bird water, bird water, <laughs> yeah, the keep the bird, bird bath water. water. That is a really cool bird bath, by the way, that you created. Thanks. I was Freaking scrambling awesome. for something. So I cool. Found it. Yeah. So cool. Uh, one last thing uh, before we we go, I just uh, maybe and maybe you have a good answer for for me. Cost. I mean, I know that it varies quite a bit depending on the the name brand versus the, the not and or style or type. Mm-hmm. But is it? I, is it, I mean, it's going to save water. But is it going to hurt the pocketbook? I'm just, I'm a little bit nervous about that. So I bought a hundred feet. So they had two at where I went and shopped. I will not say where. Right. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just kind of, I'm just curious if because I, I think I'm people have these grand it. ideas of saving water, but, but is it, does it really, is it quite painful to, to retrofit? No, it's not, it's not hard at all. And I bought, um, you know, elbows and tees and all this stuff to make a nice, even grid pattern. And I had like all this other things that I probably didn't really need. Or if you have a larger system that's not doing so many cuts, you're not going to meet, need as many elbows and, and, and three, three tees or three way tees yeah. for the water to go through. Um, and I bought a hundred feet of Netafim couple of emitters um i didn't buy a hole punch and it was like 60 bucks yeah 70 bucks not bad and i could have cut i and and if i would have bought the 250 it was 250 feet of netafim or the the off brand of netafim that i bought uh-huh. um it was even like cheaper per foot okay so um and I only used like maybe 30 feet of that because I already had some Netafim in the ground. I just extended my bed, so I needed more Netafim in the area that I Well, and you'll eventually had. use use the other portion of that when you uh, create Great. more beds. And I have planned beds. for more. I cool. ran out of elbows, though, so I have to go buy more elbows. But you get like a pack of 10 elbows for like... Three dollars. Oh, okay. Two dollars. Yeah. Easy like money. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not. It's it's not that bad. Okay. And now, That's good to hear. With those little sprinkler pull out um, pressure reducers, the, uh, Cynthia said they were twenty bucks, or were they forty? 
Okay. And, and with one Anywhere of those, you there. can run up to 100 feet. Yes, because oh, cool. it's on a zone. It's on, as long as it's on its own zone. Mm-hmm. So I have plans to, to utilize those and, and, and see how they work. Oh, cool. So my what I retrofitted was an old Netafim zone already. So I just added on to that zone. Yeah. And you, did, how many, how long did it take you approximately to, to, to redo and, and retrofit that, that, uh, um, just so that people have an idea of like, oh man, is this going to yeah. kill my whole weekend or how, how is it looking? It was like maybe three hours of work. Like oh, I had to take out what was there, see how much I had and then kind of just formulate a plan. I really, I just said, I, I, I had an idea what I wanted to do. And then I just kind of went along and did it as I didn't like write out everything and no, no. plan out the PSI or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, but I just kind of worked it and um, had made sure I had plenty of stuff. I wish I would have had more elbows because I didn't actually loop the whole system together. So I have dead ends to where the tube ends and I had, I, I pinched it off. Oh yeah. It's much more efficient to keep it. Looped. looped because then if you have a hole or if I cut it, then the pressure stays up. So I won't get, I won't have that. I, it just ends. Yeah. But I did have it go two ways. I just didn't, wasn't able to get them to meet because I ran out of elbows. Oh dude. I know. $3 for a 10 pack. I know. Wait, what? Yeah. In the future, man. That or sounds could, great. Or you could buy like a large one that has like a bunch of different site or, you know, has them all together in one like a big monster pack that has like 50 of each one or something. I don't know. Yeah. Well, and that's not a bad teams. idea to have extra, you know, yeah. on hand, but. See, and I bought ones that if there is a break, it's super easy to mend. Cool. So. It just connects the two no and it's coupler. just a start. Yep. Internal coupler. Yeah. I wish I had the better Nate terms for it, but super yeah. easy, not hard to maintain. Yeah. Uh, and then it saves you a lot of, on water and well, separates and those zones. Really nice. Saves water. And I, and I believe that your plants will uh, benefit from less disease, powdery mildew issues. Mm-hmm. Um, insects. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you don't get that super crazy lush growth to where bugs are just like, Oh, lunch, you know, I'm going to go chomp on that plant. That's been overwatered. Right. Yep. Anyway, weak roots, yeah. all that stuff. Oh man. All right. Well, there we go. Cool brother. And we'll see you next time. Suckers. Take care. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Later. Bye. All right. Well, there we go. That was number 79. Drip line irrigation installation. I want to thank Brad for helping me with this podcast. I want to thank you, the podlings out there. We love you. Thank you for listening. Uh, you can come find us on Facebook. We have a Facebook group of the Horticult. Come like, subscribe, join the conversation there online. We also have a YouTube. So you can come find us on YouTube. You can watch the, the recordings of the podcast, see what me and Brad look like. I also got Horticult.com. Go check that out for all your Horticult needs. All right. Thank you much. Plant on, Babylon.